they they changed a few things. Uh, they had a bit of an issue yesterday, so I had to do a little bit of extra steps to get the stream today started. Oh, hold on, let me check the sound. I had a bit of an issue, so I had to do a little Can bit of extra me? steps to oh, get or the do stream I not have today sound? started. Oh, oh hold on, yeah, I do not sound. have sound. Hold oh, on, no. there we go. <laughs> okay, I just didn't have sound. You guys had sound. I didn't have sound. Well, welcome back. Uh, the session doesn't seem to have started. I'm gonna check. Is it? Ah, it should be. It should be started. Okay. Cool. It should be. Everything should be good. <laughs> I don't want to waste any more time. Kind of doing a. Doing. Kind of workshop kind of stuff, making sure I get everything right. So we'll just go ahead and move into it. And if there's problems, we'll kind of attack. You know, attack them as they arise. We haven't talked to Karma. Ishwanti yet. So let's go ahead and give her a talk. How about that? A plumpish woman in a white coat is sitting at a table surrounded by screens. Her fingers fly rapidly over the keyboard, the sharp click of the keys like distant gunfire. As you approach, the clicking of the keyboard stops and the white raises her eyes to study you. She doesn't seem angry or irritated. But her glance is so cold, it gives you chills. Without a word, she returns to her work as if you didn't exist. Introduce yourself and tell her that you've been working on it. To get, you'll be working together on the emulator project. Say that you're a new employee. And wait, we're a new employee? I mean, we've been an employee. Is this a new corp? Did we join a new corporation? Is that how it worked? I mean, I didn't know if I. Did we join the new committee? <laughs> I'm not really sure how this is going. Okay, either way, introduce yourself and tell her we're working together in an emulator product. Yeah, let's be nice. Project, not product. The keyboard noises stop. Gama Ishtwani. Nice to meet you. She says indifferently. The white offers you her hand, but retracts it the moment your fingers touch. Hers are cold, as cold as her dead eyes. The keys begin their interminable clicking again. Hmm. The clicking stops and Ishtwani grabs your sleeve. I will ask you a few questions and then you are free to go. She looks at your badge, apparently recognizing your name and rank. Are you connected to other project participants somehow? Any intimate relationships? Friendship? Family? Uh, we could say rudely answer a number of business or tell her that there's no connection or answer that you that you dated some of your project participants before. I mean, not that I know of. I was, there's no connection. Karma nods slowly without shifting her piercing gaze. Is that the exact and entire truth? Ishtwani's grip slackens slightly, but her fingers are still wrapped around your wrist like a handcuff. What were your goals in joining the project? She asks. Admit you're convinced... Admit you're convinced that you brought an extremely value to the project. Tell her that you were only responding to Russo's request. Answer that you're still a Cronus employee. You must fulfill your duties. Or note, technically, you're only a few days under the dome and still trying to understand what's going on. We'll answer that we're still a Cronus employee. and must fulfill our duties. How about that? Something akin to understanding flashes in Ishtwani's gaze for a second. You're right. Even the incident isn't a good enough reason for neglecting official duties. I guess we can be by the book. The white releases your hand. I appreciate your answers. You may leave. You're distracting me from my work. Uh, say that you need drivers for the emulator. Still silent, Karma returns to her computer and resumes tapping away on the keyboard. Uh, repeat your question. The absence of an answer is itself an answer, meaning either no or that I am still thinking about it. Ishtwani speaks through clenched teeth. She does not pause in her typing. She steps away from the table and crosses her arms to rest her hands on their opposite shoulders. You pressuring me won't make the driver appear any sooner. But you can contribute to the common cause. Are you ready to hear how? Then listen. I won't repeat myself. Ishtwani plucks the Kairos from your pocket without asking and begins clicking away. I'm uploading the coordinates of the science and engineering team camp. Maelstrom activity in that area is relatively high, but it is still safe. Four scientists are taking readings on that activity and using the data to build an updated driver. So we've got it and move away. 
Okay, that's neat. All right. So let's go ahead and head out. <laughs> let's go ahead and head out and talk to this guy again. See if he's going to get upset about us not wearing those special shoes. Good day to you. Okay, no, no. Okay, so it wasn't something we had to worry about. We're going to now raid this place empty. <laughs> oh, there's a brochure. Afflicted. Due to the increasing frequency of both incidents and questions which distract from our scientific... Uh, scientific personnel from the important work, we're going to clarify a number of points regarding the so-called afflicted. Firstly, the afflicted, a.k.a. zombies, infected white eyes, are employees of the committee like everyone else. They're not the living dead of urban legend. Yes, their minds have been damaged by the maelstrom, hence the name, but they're still people, alive, although not in the best of health. Secondly, yes, the afflicted can pose a threat to the health of other employees, case of aggression, and even in cannibalism has been regularly observed. So it's recommended not to make contact. Attention. The affliction is not transmitted through bites, blood, or other bodily fluids. This is simply a myth of a zombie myth. I gotcha. And anyone spreading these laws will face appropriate penalties. Thirdly, there's, a, there's still hope that, uh, that the damage done by Maelstrom can be halted or even reversed. Simply put, the committee takes care of all its employees, no matter their condition, and working tirelessly on a cure. Therefore, non-lethal means should be used to subdue the afflicted. Murder is not encouraged. Although, uh, although not condemned... If required, force in due measure. Uh, remember that we are representatives of humanity. We may we may be the last human beings on this planet, but we cannot allow our ranks to thin even faster. Please be con content, uh, conscientious. Wait a second. Uh, three simple rules: avoid, understand, avoid, do not kill. Hold on. Avoid the. The committee takes care of its employees no matter the condition and is working tirelessly on a cure. Therefore, non-lethal means should be used to subdue the afflicted. Oops. <laughs> oops. <laughs> uh, oops, we have been killing them. Is that a problem? I feel like that's a problem. We caught Murder is not encouraged, although not condemned, if required, due to force. Do measure. Remember, these representatives who made, we were representatives of humanity. We may be the last living, um, last human beings on this planet. We're, but we're not, right? I mean, that's my understanding. We're, we didn't get outside the dome. I don't know. Well, we're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. So we're just gonna loot this place empty. Turn over here. Here, take the stuff. Oh, you checked their terminal while they're at it? Oh, no, it's illegal. That'd be hilarious. So, no hunting down the afflicted. Let's try to keep the casualties to a minimum. Okay, let's run over office cabinet. Down here. Let's see. Run out this way. Russo is there? comparing the readings with the data in her notebook. Any news? We need to prepare this thing for the new trials as soon as possible. Okay, we don't need a reminder, but they, there's Russo a few things you can Russo is comparing ask. the readings with the data in her notebook. Any news? Drivers, we need to prepare. There is a guy we need to talk to at night. So you know what? We're gonna wait at night. And we're gonna go and uh, we're gonna go and try to meet the guy. Because he could give us teleglasses, and we could take them back here. And we know exactly where to go, right, everybody? <laughs> we're gonna break into a. We're gonna break into that into those houses again. <laughs> okay, so he wants to meet at My night. My dearly beloved people of the dome. 
I mean, I guess, hold on. Pause and listen and think. Heart is rising after the maelstrom. What brought you here to this desert? He's rising. Okay, those are our story quests. Suspicious cave, Kurt Spengler, suspicious blood bets. Okay, he's gonna be talking at night, so uh, we'll come. At, we'll come back at night. I don't know exactly when night would be, so to speak. The night of which he describes, but we'll, we'll we'll wait till the evening. However, the game describes it. We could have probably looted more, but it's fine. Let's have him break in. I will say you can get a lot of experience by sleeping and kicking in this door. He's getting a lot of experience. I mean, then again, I don't know if he's really getting it. Night. Okay, let's go back over here. Because that's who we should be talking to. And these things, everything will be yours if only you attend our service. The doors of the church are always open. All right, I don't know if he wants us to talk to him or just sit here and watch. Santiago spreads his arms as if to give you a hearty hug. Good to see you. Please don't forget about our sermons every day at 6 p.m. What? Wait, what time is it in game? My dearly beloved people of. Oh, the we went Dome. to straight up midnight. And sisters, pause and listen. Hold on, let's go to six o'clock. We'll wait again until six o'clock. We'll go back. We'll go back. Cause I do want to see. Oh, now that we're gonna break in the door again. Break in the door. And we're gonna sleep. I don't know why, if with all these houses available, we keep breaking into the RV. <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna steal, I mean, we might as well take the high class, but you know, some, there's something just so, so uh, perfect with the RV, isn't there? <laughs> Let's sleep. All right, so uh, evening, how about that? When's that? Is that 6 p.m.? Yes, exactly 6 p.m. Okay, let's get there before it's too late. The doors of the church are always open. We'll be waiting for you. Okay, let's talk to him. Come on. My dearly We're hungry. We're mildly people hungry. Of the dome. People start gathering around the oh. makeshift stage. Judging by their clothes, some of them came from the city, but most are locals. A handful brought their own glasses, but the majority has none. Apparently, they'll be hearing the sermon for the first time. Okay, that's interesting. Santiago is contentedly pacing the length of the stage, wearing his usual grin. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I do ask that you please forgive the delay. Once my assistants arrive with the equipment for any of you who've come without, we shall begin. Ah, here they are. All right. Lights shimmer behind the sewage gate. Some people with torches appear to drag a large wooden box up on the stage. Someone pries open the lid. Teleglasses are laid in rows in the box. The assistants begin to pass them out to the crowd. We get a special... Okay, silver wing, compare them with the standard. Yeah, compare them with the standard. You take the glasses off and turn them over in your hands. They're strongly reminiscent of Super Color Navigator, a manufacturer well known to everyone in Silver Wing. The resemblance is superficial, though. While the administrator glasses have a small display inside, these are equipped with something much more complicated. Santiago claps his hands. Ah, this will be a wonderful night. Dear guests, please take a couple of steps back from the stage and put on your glasses. Um, okay. I'm worried. I want to just do it because we, we need to know what they do and I assume it won't kill us immediately. You place the device on you your head. Enough sake. Nothing's happened yet. The world around you is unchanged, except for the slightly purple tint. You look around. Everyone is hastily donning their teleglasses. 
The spotlights around the stage go dark, and the rippling screens turn off one by one. Vague, bright flashes fly past you in the gathering purple dusk, and you hear the sounds of the seashore. Waves are rolling in over a strip of pebbles onto fine, white sand. Looking more closely, you see the water is sparkling light blue, rose, and white. The waves are filled with light, although it doesn't resemble sunlight. Casting your head back, you look up at a peacefully blazing blue disk high in the sky. Someone takes you by the hand. A pretty woman is smiling kindly at you. Her face a shimmering white. I am Sister Maria. Come with me. You walk along the shore together. The sea washing up at your feet recalls memories. Though it's hard to say whether they represent things that actually happened. Did you go looking for little crabs? Did you build a castle from a handful of wet sand that formed walls and towers by itself? The sunglasses you just picked up from the surf, did you ever really find them on a beach? Maria gives your fingers a playful squeeze. We could stay here forever. It doesn't matter where you were before. Here, you can build and live the life you want. All right, so, hmm. Wonder aloud when the sermon will actually begin. Ask Maria what the catch is. Ask about your physical needs. You still need you still need to eat, drink, return from reality from time to time. Let's, let's say that. <laughs> How about that? Let's find out about the physical needs. See what happens there. The church gathers people to find solutions together. Stay with us, and you'll see how much we've achieved. But you'll have to come to the second sermon for that. The woman is holding you by the shoulders. The sand on her hands sparkles with minuscule neon lights. Hmm. This seems real suspicious. This is real su Wait, what was the name? Oh, no. I'm trying to remember what the name of the, the anomaly. Hold on. Ask what the catch is, or... Yeah, ask what the catch is. The woman stops to kick up sand with her bare foot. Must there be a catch? The world we're sharing right now is unreal. But what is real nowadays? Apart from a civilization dying in the desert, this place, it's alive and more real than you think. Hmm, the last two are kind of a difficult one. I'm going to wonder aloud when it will begin. Her smile seems to glow with a gentle light. It has already begun. A sermon need not be only about words. Showing is much more important than telling. Hold on one second. All right, so say nothing and walk beside her. The and soft silence. roll of the waves brings peace. You walk contentedly alongside Maria. The sky overhead reminds you of a blue rose abyss. Massive glowing streams rise from the gleaming horizon like flames in slow motion. Hmm. Your companion slows down a bit. We're almost there. You'll see something soon. She takes a step into the ocean, dragging you after her. The water splashes with each step, but doesn't slow you down at all. The dark blue dome above grows ever larger and lighter, as if you were strolling right into the heavens, your feet never leaving the sea. When the opening above your head has vanished completely, you see an enormous arch lost in the boundless sky. A distant land 
dotted with seas, roofs this world. The lights of settlements on this sky continent shimmer through gleaming clouds. Maria turns to you. We'll stop here. That faraway world can be yours. The church is willing to give it to each of us. All we need to do is take so a step we're... forward. I will be waiting here for your return. Before you have a chance to respond, the space around you begins to fall apart. Everything decays into a grid of glowing lines, which rapidly blink off one by one. You rip the glasses off your head. Waters sloshing in your boots, and the ground around your feet is wet. A novitiate standing by the stage is holding a fire hose. He closes the nozzle and drags it away. Ah, uh, so they're kind of like staging. So they're basically, basically staging. It's basically all staged. Then the lanterns all getting. come on again, illuminating the stage where Santiago's standing, arms thrown up. Thank you for coming, everyone. Maria and I will be waiting for you at our next sermon. So basically what they've been doing is they've been My staging beloved people of like kind of like a mixture because so this is my prediction, right? So they've got they've got a stage where basically they use psionics and the screen to all basically gives and, and then the waterworks or whatever they did over there. To basically give suggestions, basically give suggest uh, like to slightly suggest th like things with their uh, with the camera, or not camera, but with the screens and the water and all that to basically make people think that it's go it's doing some big kind of thing, but it's all kind of staged. That's my guess from so far. That's that's what I picked up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a perfect guess, but I think that I'm kind of on the right track. If I had to guess, we're gonna eat some. These will give us thirst or, or lower our thirst too. Yeah, let's consume that. Good thing is, Crump here doesn't need to eat. Crump is basically needless. <laughs> he doesn't need. Wait, is it because of his survival? I wonder if it's his survival. I, I wonder if he actually. We can check his uh, character. Is if, it, if it's survival, maybe because I do know there's a perk where you don't have to. If you're alone, if you're traveling alone without companions, hunger and thirst are no threat to you by adapting the conditions under the dome. Okay, that's probably it, if I had a guess. If I had a guess, that would be probably what I would think that's causing it. But until then, we're going to go and probably check on the quest that we're supposed to be doing. Because we are a little bit back. I did remember that from last stream. But I don't remember... Much more. So quests we got. Which one should we do? Emulator is getting its energy supply from Magellan Station, which is located near the city. Emulator project after physical... Okay, so this one wants us to do... Okay, we found the Maelstrom who wrote the driver. Okay, we, if we want to help the driver, that, that means we have to do them. So provided with the coordinates of the camp, you can just visit the scientist and pick up the driver. Okay, so if we just go to the map then... I guess we'll have to go out of the place to get the map. Now, do we want to help the one person in, or do we want to go into the city first? We haven't gone into the city. Let's go into the city first before we go start running off anywhere. Because I want to know if I just signed up to join join a t join a team before really realizing I it. I thought I made myself clear before. The city is under quarantine. Okay, Hi there. let's go ahead. Give the nod and give your electronic key. Blackwing presses your selectron to, a, uh, to the stationary scanner. You're not in the database. And according to our rules regarding access, in our article number, for a long time she lists them. Articles, sub-items, appendixes, and footnotes, while occasionally pausing for a breath of air. And such, the entrance to the city is permitted only for registered citizen, uh, citizens and embassy employees. You do not fall into that category. Any question or no questions, leave the area. Okay, so we're not even... Bye -bye. Let's go ahead and talk to that person who wanted in. Let them know we couldn't let them in even if we wanted. Where are they, anyway? Are they still there? Yeah. Kat Katzerina. Katzerina. In the evening, Junktown... Whoa! In the evening, Junktown slums is under attack. Scurry ensues and 
You realize something is wrong. You decide to, uh, to find out who's interrupting your pace. It turns out a group of hostile raiders are clearly preparing to attack. You understand that a fight is inevitable. What just happened? <laughs> we just got attacked out of nowhere. I'll smack you up. All right, you're dead meat. Okay. We do have guards. Ow. Oh, poor Katsarina is going to be in trouble. Okay, so we've got to help, or they're probably just dead. 